Hello there, governor. Throw another shrimp on the barbe. Wait, I think I'm mixing up my stereotypical accents. Anyhow, where was I? Oh yeah, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. When AC fans talk about the best games in the franchise, we'll often hear games like AC2, Brotherhood, Black Flag, or even Origins and Odyssey among the RPG Giga Chads out there. Yet Syndicate doesn't get as much love in the online discourse. Much like pre-Hogwarts Harry Potter, Syndicate is beaten and shoved under the staircase, the forgotten and mistreated child in the Assassin's Creed family. But in my quest to play every Assassin's Creed game before the launch of Mirage this fall, I decided to give Syndicate a shot. And in this video, I'll be telling you whether it's worth your time today. This review will be mostly spoiler free, aside from some basic story setup. So buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and let's take a trip to Bongerland. The year was 2015. CDPR dropped the groundbreaking Witcher 3, a pair of New York prisoners pulled off an IRL Shawshank Redemption, and Ubisoft released the ninth entry in their annual Assassin's Creed franchise to a lukewarm reception. Syndicate garnered mixed reviews and poor sales at launch, and by all accounts, the game was basically a commercial flop. Ubisoft would go on to do a soft reboot of the franchise, transforming Assassin's Creed into an open-world RPG. So in a sense, Syndicate killed Assassin's Creed. And yet, from a gameplay perspective, Syndicate has some of the best stealth, combat, and movement mechanics the series has ever seen. So what went wrong? Syndicate's commercial failure was pretty much inevitable, owing to two disastrous Ubisoft game launches from the previous year, Watch Dogs and Assassin's Creed Unity. In 2014, Ubisoft was collecting more L's than the 08 Lions. Watch Dogs was a new GTA-style hacker guy franchise that promised groundbreaking next-generation graphics. Gamers were blown away by the gameplay trailers, but when the game actually launched, it looked like this, leading to many people feeling scammed by the bait-and-switch visual downgrade. And as for Assassin's Creed Unity, well, that game was a complete and utter dumpster fire at launch. Unity was filled with game-breaking bugs, visual glitches, and connectivity issues that made it basically unplayable. Who could forget the legendary French revolutionary, Cousin It? I think this one screenshot from Unity did more damage to the Assassin's Creed franchise than anything before or since. So when Syndicate came out a year after these twin-barreled hot messes, gamers closed their wallets and said, that's gonna be a no for me, dog." And that's really unfortunate, because at its core, Syndicate is one of the best Assassin's Creed games I have ever played. So let's dive into the gameplay and discover why Syndicate is so goddamn fun to play. Assassin's Creed Syndicate follows the journey of twin siblings Jacob and Evie Fry, as they establish a gang, fight Templars, and hunt for Isu artifacts in Victorian-era London. Much like GTA V, you can switch between both playable characters at any time in the open world. However, some missions can only be completed by either Jacob or Evie. Both characters have a separate skill tree, which is mostly the same, save for a handful of unique skills for each character. Jacob is more geared towards raw combat tankiness with skills like increased HP and damage, while Evie has more stealth skills, including the ability to utilize an invisibility cloak like Harry freaking Potter. You're a wizard, Evie. Both characters gain skill points simultaneously, so you don't need to worry about grinding XP on them separately. You'll eventually earn enough points to unlock everything on the skill tree, so there really aren't any build choices or anything like that. Movement and traversal has always been an important component in Assassin's Creed, and Syndicate is no different. Jacob and Evie have three main options for getting around London. You can run through the streets on foot or bound across rooftops with the dynamic parkour system. Parkour in Syndicate is really, really good. They pretty much ripped the same system from Unity, which arguably has the best parkour in the entire series. But ultimately, traversing London on foot is a sucker's game. You can also hijack carriages and trample civilians like a steampunk Grand Theft Auto. This is incredibly fun and much faster than hoofing it. I even stole a double-decker tour bus one time, much to the dismay of the bourgeois passengers. This driver should be fired immediately! The carriages can be a bit buggy though, no pun intended. It's not uncommon 
common to watch carriages jettison through the air, or NPCs getting trampled in a hit and run. I hope that guy had good health insurance, because the NHS wasn't rolled out for another 80 years or so. While carriage travel is fun, it's still not the best way to get around. Real Giga Chad assassins utilize the greatest tool that the franchise has ever seen. That's right, I'm talking about the zipline gun. God save the queen, this is the most fun I've ever had traveling around the map in an AC game. It makes getting around London so fast and dynamic. While on the ground, you can use the zipline gun to quickly grapple up the side of buildings, effortlessly scaling to the top. And while on rooftops, you can easily connect to neighboring buildings with the click of a button. I absolutely love this thing. And in my humble opinion, the zipline gun is the single greatest thing that Syndicate has added to the franchise. Revelations had ziplines too, but only in some select locations. In Syndicate, you can attach a zipline to pretty much any rooftop surface in the entire map. The only real downside is it makes parkour nearly obsolete, which is probably the reason why fans don't talk about the parkour in this game as much as they do in Unity, even though both these games share basically the exact same system. In Unity, you need parkour to get around Paris. Because the streets are too crowded and dangerous, bounding across the rooftops is the way to go. But in Syndicate, you'll pretty much only need the zipline gun. It's just so much faster and easier to use than any alternatives. I did glitch to my death on the zipline a few times, but hey, this is a Ubisoft game after all. The combat in Syndicate is simple yet really satisfying. You'll mostly get involved in melee battles, and your options are attack, break defense, counter, or pistol counter, which is used to interrupt enemies trying to shoot you in the face. Some of the enemies can be incredibly tanky until you've unlocked better weapons and skill upgrades, so combat can be a bit tedious at times, but overall it's pretty fun. You also have a variety of tools to utilize in combat situations such as smoke grenades, voltaic bombs that shock and stun opponents, and my personal favorite, Berserk darts. These bad boys turn enemies hostile against anyone. It was hilarious to launch a few of these into a crowd of enemies and watch them tear each other apart. Divide and conquer, baby. The stealth systems have also been improved since Unity. The cover system works so much better. You can also crouch or hide in haystacks, tall grass, and wooden booths. You know, the standard stealth game stuff at this point. The core gameplay loop of Syndicate involves conquering gang territories, upgrading your gang, completing main story missions, side missions, and collectibles. Before Chirac, there were the gang wars in London, which makes up a big part of the gameplay in Syndicate. London is currently carved up by Templar allied gangs called the Blighters. Jacob and Evie will need to liberate different chunks of the map, slowly gaining territory for their own gang, the Rooks. If you've played AC Brotherhood, this is pretty similar to taking out Borgia strongholds. There are four different types of gang liberation missions. Templar Hunt, where you infiltrate a blighter hideout and assassinate a specific target. Child Liberation, where you sneak into factories and help free the child laborers. Strongholds, where you go into a stronghold and kill all the gang members. And finally, Bounties. These were the most annoying ones for me. You need to sneak into a gang territory and kidnap a specific character, escorting them out of the area at gunpoint before shoving them into a carriage and driving them to be taken into police custody. In order to get a bonus, you need to capture them alive. If you trigger combat at any point, they'll start running away, forcing you to chase them down. There were just too many opportunities for things to go sideways in these. As you conquer more territory in a particular district, you'll eventually get ambushed by the local blighter gang leader. If you manage to chase and kill the leader in this event, it will make the subsequent gang war significantly easier to complete. So I highly recommend icing your gang rival here if you can. <laughs> Once all territory in a particular region has been captured, you'll initiate a gang war to conquer the zone for the Rooks once and for all. This involves an all-out street brawl with the opposing gang with the winner taking all. If you haven't taken out the gang leader prior to the final battle, you'll have a mini-boss fight against them here, sometimes with additional goons thrown in. The main benefits of conquering territory, aside from the money and XP, are that it unfogs more of the map, allowing you to identify nearby chests and collectibles. And it reduces the blighter presence on the street in the district, leading to less attacks on your person in the streets. But wait a minute, you might be thinking, I thought this was Assassin's Creed, not Gangs of London. 
Well, it's both, actually. For the main plot, Evie and Jacob Fry are taking on the Templar Order and their main man, Crawford Sterick. Evie will spend most of her time trying to locate First Civilization artifacts, while Jacob is like, just tell me who to kill, bruh. The main story in Assassin's Creed Syndicate is kind of whatever from a story perspective, but in terms of mission design, it has several phenomenal missions that were an absolute joy to experience. In typical AC fashion, throughout the campaign, Jacob and Evie will assassinate Templar targets and search for an Isu relic. Jacob will handle most of the killing while Evie is off looking for the Shroud of Eden. The latter is a powerful cloak that essentially grants immortality to its wearer, an IRL god mode, if you will. Assassination missions follow a similar format to AC Unity. You start the mission with a brief cutscene that gives you the lay of the land. This opening cinematic will reveal opportunities, which are optional objectives you can complete to give you an easier chance at the target. Of course, you can still freewheel it if you want to, but it's nice to have a story-driven way to infiltrate restricted and heavily guarded areas. For example, you can trick a station attendant to direct civilians to the wrong train platform, providing you with a golden opportunity to slip through the crowd unseen. Surprise, motherfucker. My favorite one is where Evie pretends to be a prisoner to get within an arm's length of her target. I think the most memorable missions were the ones involving Max Roth, especially the theater one at the end. I don't want to spoil too much, but this guy is an absolute mad lad. Set the dynamite and let's blow it to atoms. Outside the main story, there are a variety of side quests you can pursue from a cornucopia of historical figures from 19th century England. Characters like Karl Marx, Charles Darwin, Charles Dickens, and even the Queen. These were pretty cool for the most part, and I happily completed all of them. But don't expect Witcher 3 level content here. It's just a height. One thing I sadly neglected for most of my playthrough were the gang upgrades and side activities, which are some of the best ways to rake in cash throughout the game, which you will need to complete upgrades and buy better gear. You don't want to be showing up to a gang war with a couple of pea shooters and a butter knife, do you? Oh, I forgot to mention the hooligans. Much like AC Brotherhood and Revelations, you can recruit minions to fight alongside you. Except in this case, you're bringing in gang members instead of assassins. You can direct the rooks to fight enemy blighters or police to create a distraction or help you eliminate your foes. Upgrading your gang will give the rooks more damage, health, and better weapons so they can survive longer in combat and dish out more damage. Gang gang, baby! And as of this moment, you all work for us. You can also invest in additional mob businesses like pubs and fight clubs to generate more passive income to collect in your train hideout. The other side activities are pretty generic, like hijacking carriages, protecting carriages, racing carriages, and robbing trains and boats. You can make pretty good money from these, but I found I got most of what I needed from chests, passive income, and side quests that I didn't spend a whole lot of time doing these. And this wouldn't be a Ubisoft game without a shitload of collectibles too. There are several different collections to pursue, such as illustrations, pressed flowers, beer bottles, music boxes, and more. The main one that is worth doing are the music boxes. If you collect them all, you will unlock an Isu armor set in an assassin vault. One of my favorite side activities to pursue in every AC game is unlocking these special or legendary outfits. Ever since the armor of Altair in AC2, I've collected every one of them. So I was excited to see what Syndicate had in store for me. And well, I don't really care for it. The color scheme of the Minerva outfit is pretty cool. The white and gold makes Evie look like a Scientologist or some kind of cult member. But I'm not crazy about the visual glitches in the design. It just looks weird. So I ended up switching back to a more badass black coat with a red cape. Syndicate really do got that drip. At the end of the day, Assassin's Creed Syndicate is one of the most fun and well-rounded AC games I've ever played. And if you haven't tried it, I highly recommend you give it a shot. The game is only $30 on Steam, and during sales you can get it as cheap as 7 bucks. If you like to complete side quests, you can easily spend at least 30 hours on this game in a single playthrough. So there you have it. AC Syndicate is absolutely still worth playing today. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more reviews and RPG videos. I mostly cover games like Mass Effect and Cyberpunk, but I'm an Assassin's Creed enjoyer as well. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.